I'm gonna give you an engine right on your transom. It's gonna be white to match the body. It's gonna be a Suzuki, 25 horsepower. I'm gonna give you a fuel tank that holds an extra gallon of gas. And I'm not shaving nothing off of you because I already shaped you like a bullet. When I get you primed, painted, and registered, you're gonna be ready to go out on that river. You're gonna be perfect. You hear me? I know at least one of you guessed it. All right, so what we've done here, put a real thick layer of that top side paint on my floor panels here. And then I've scattered all over it I don't know if you can make that out. All over it is scattered this texture. This is fast grip number 500. Coarse, non-skid particles. I need to scatter those stuff in that thick coat of paint and then we're gonna let it dry. And once this paint is dry, then we get the compressor. We'll hit it with a blast of air, knock off anything that's loose, and we'll roll another coat right over it. And these boards, of course, have already been primed with epoxy primer. All right, here I've got a plastic hatch. It's made by Seaflow. I'm sure that's Chinese for hatch. Um, it's not going to get a whole lot of foot traffic, so I'm not too concerned about the overall durability as long as it lasts. It's 18 by 24 inches. I've got it set back far enough to clear the lumber. I'm going to cut the hole. It's an easy outline to follow. I've got it offset to the starboard side because the port side is where the trolling motor is going to be lying. All the way up to the bow there. And uh, I'm kind of doing this backwards, but I'm going to cut the hole and I'm going to build the compartment inside um, before I fill it with foam. I probably should have built the compartment inside before I put this cap on it, but uh, that's the way things went. This is the uh, piece that I cut out. And it's nice, I'm inspecting my layup right here. Solid, no gaps pretty good if you recall it's three quarter inch pieces of uh, plywood with glass and epoxy in between them that looks like it worked out well unfortunately I don't have any use for the uh, the hatch board here Check that out. It burned all the wood away between the layers and left the fiberglass. No clue that was gonna happen. Very cool. And that's what we've got. This is gonna be less difficult than I thought. I just need one board. Just need to put one support across here. And I already built one in there when I was building the boat to give it a little extra strength. Scuba! So better boat did make good on their promise about the caulk. Uh, when I sent the email saying that it didn't fit a caulk gun, I think it was about a day. She got back to me and said, hey, we did have one bad manufacturing run. I'm sorry you got that one. Thought we had disposed of all of them. Let's see if it fits. Well, how about that? No problem, huh? another late night I'm gonna put this plank down the middle of the boat clean out caulk and paint the entire inside of the whole thing get it all sealed in 
the top sides are all still pretty sticky. Installing this motor was pretty straightforward and very much like the drain tube installation. You drill your holes, you fill them up with your marine sealant, then you shove your bolts through, put the nuts on, and boom. Just make sure that motor is perfectly centered, like I did, and you should have no issues. Here is the rundown of everything that we have left to install and do on the boat before we put it out on the water. We're just about there. All right, now that we've got our Suzuki outboard mounted and bolted and all sealed up nicely, uh, we've got a whole bunch of other stuff we got to add to the boat here back here is going to be a uh, bilge pump kit in case we get swamped or in case i'm too fat and the boat sinks we've got a fuel line and a wiring harness to go to the engine legitimately with enough slack in it it only goes that far and that's where the battery is going to be sitting in the center console we've got lines for the trolling motor i'm going to use chunks of those splice them into the battery line give me a little extension there and seal everything up real nice and make it corrosion proof and all that sort of thing. As far as the battery, this is one I already had on hand. Still in good shape, fully charged, ready to go. Interstate batteries, 24 DP AGM. That means it's a group 24 size, uh, dual purpose and AGM absorbed glass matte battery. Before lithiums came along, this is pretty much the bee's knees, so to speak, as far as batteries went. AGMs was the way to go. They're still heavy, like anything else, but you can put them in any orientation. They don't need any maintenance. You just keep them nice and charged and they're good to go. This will work for now. I will be putting lithiums in here to knock off some of the weight because this Group 24 battery is pretty heavy. Um, but it'll do everything I need it to do for right now until I figure out what's going on. And it'll give me a good approximation of the weight of the two um, lithium batteries I'm going to be adding here. So that'll work. Of course, here comes the train. Yeah. That's how it works. As soon as I start filming. Hadn't been a train come by all night. This is a steering system I bought. I can't vouch for it, but it's universal, rotary. Better boat anchor kit they sent to me for T&E. 
Don't ever go test a boat without an anchor in case your motor dies. Got some steering cables back here. Got a, like a, it's like a sheath to go over all your electrical lines to keep them from getting nicked. And give them a nice white cover. Stop them from deteriorating in the UV. This is a bracket for a cooler uh, to bolt it down to the floorboards. And the cooler is going to be my seat. I don't have very much room in here, so you got to dual purpose some stuff. So I'll be running a cooler with a nice thick pad uh, for my butt to rest on while I'm driving this thing. Here's our throttle assembly. It's actually going to go on the left side of the center console. Uh, it's a right-sided mount, so like you would put it, you know, here if your chair is here, right? But it's going to go on the left side of the console, so everything's tight and right in the middle of the boat. Then I've got a, it's not anything expensive, a tachometer for your outboard motor is really the best tool to make sure that that motor is running right with this boat and the right prop and all that sort of thing. You're looking for a target range of RPMs, and if you're comfortably in there, that means you're getting the uh, most speed out of your boat and engine combination, if that makes any sense. And we'll talk more about that once we get this sucker on the water. There's a center console right there. It's only about one third of the way done, but it's got a coat of paint on it. And I haven't fared it out or anything, but I don't even know. I don't even know if I want a center console, right? I might, depending on how I have to balance my weight in the boat, right? Depending on how far forward or back, how much, what is this? Six gallons of gas is gonna weigh. That cooler seat full of ice, anchors and all that kind of stuff. The weight distribution is the main thing I'm concerned with. So I'm only kind of temporarily putting the boat together to make sure it's exactly the way I want it. Things are where they need to be. The boat rides properly with the given weight in it, right? And if everything's right, then we'll kind of take some stuff apart. We'll put more paint on the boat. We'll add some flotation foam, which doesn't weigh much, both in the bow, underneath the compartment where we're gonna put the anchor and everything else. We're gonna add flotation underneath that deck and I'm working on an idea for flotation up under the gunnels here. Uh, we'll just put a little skirt over it to hide it all. And uh, I think we'll be, we'll be in good shape if we do that. I think we can, uh, we can call it a reasonably safe boat. So it'll sink like a bathtub, but it won't go all the way down, right? You got something to sit in so the sharks don't eat you. After that, after we get all this stuff on, after we do our flow test and make sure the motor runs right, I'm going to use that opportunity to do the break-in period for the outboard too. So it's ready to rock and roll. And uh, then we'll have cleats, rod holders, all kind of bright working stuff to screw into the rails of this boat all over the place. It's going to be bristling with stuff. And then we'll worry about adding things like breaker, breaker switches, you know, USB chargers that kind of stuff. Navigation lights, ah, we just need a bunch of stuff, you know? And then the piece de resistance, the coupe de grace, the end all, the beat all, or it's gonna be one of those Minn Kota GPS guided eye pilot freaking uh, trolling motors, a nice white one gonna go up on the bow here. That way I don't have to use my anchor, not very much anyway. I guess let's just start putting it together so we can get it in the water and see what happens. So for now we've closed up the shop because I have an adventure pending as well as having my son live with me full-time, that's Carson, you guys know him. And the fact that I'm also not working a midnight shift anymore means that now my vacations and my adventures are going to be a little bit different set up. So the boat's in mothballs, and I have set up for a several hundred mile trip down the Mississippi River during the month of November. I've got all the time off. We're going to be camping, fishing, and kayaking the entire way. It's going to be a massive paddling adventure. I've purchased a native FX-15 kayak. It's made for a tandem setup, but I'm going to be modifying it for use on this expedition. The things I learned and the situations I got to on this voyage were absolutely incredible, so stand by for a grand adventure.